This is as groovy as it gets. Oprah, can you hear me? Oprah vs. Donald 2020 is a conversation by Julie Benetti and Susan Barbro and a production of EI Alliance, copyright 2019. America is courtesy of New Threads off their new album, Felonious Wilma. Oh, Hi, this is Julie, and I'm here with Susan, and yes, it is another Oprah Can You Hear Me podcast, because folks, we don't is have she anything listening? To say. We don't have anything to say anymore. Yeah, we have lots her. to say, okay? So the other night, I was watching an old Seinfeld, oh, and it no. was funny. It was about, not that there's anything wrong with that, and if you're a Seinfeld, you know, in Seinfeldian, you know what episode that is. I'm not even going to say oh, anything more. I don't know more. that one. It's Darn. When, when the woman f- from the college comes to interview him and he th- she thinks that he and, and George are gay or whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. No, Not that there's anything wrong with that. Anyway, okay, so... And a Weight Watchers commercial came on with Oprah's voice. And it made me think of what you said earlier, that the news had on that, what, Weight Watchers wasn't doing well and yada, 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 blah, well, blah, blah. Well, their fourth so. quarter earnings, I think, weren't what they expected <laughs> of 2018. And so then the first... <laughs> well, you asked me. <laughs> That's a financial the, report, folks. <laughs> and and then, so Oprah's got to step it up with the marketing. I think she said that that she's, deal? Yeah, she's going to step up and do more <laughs> marketing to bring... And, and I heard, come on, Oprah. I mean, this is... I just started to laugh because when I when I was watching Seinfeld, the commercial came on. It made me think of that, and I heard if she really wanted to boost Weight Watchers, she'd become president and pull a Trump by instituting Weight Watchers as a national get healthy campaign. So, are you going to make me say it? <laughs> yes, I am. I mean, so, I mean, what we see with Oprah, and we see the opportunities out there. She just doesn't see it. Yeah. I guess not. You know, and, you know, the help, self-help train, she's still stuck on. Or the boat. I'm the sorry. The boat. boat. Yeah. That's the Trump train. The Trump <laughs> train. She's still on the self-help boat, and it's actually kind of sad. Yeah, but, no. you know, it is it is the way it is or whatever. And, you know, and it's not even about, you know, the, the thing is that when that thing came out about Weight Watchers, and I thought, you know... I mean, she's got to have so many millions of dollars. Mm. I mean, she's going back. And like I I was saying to you, who was the guy? There was some guy that she had on her show that was helping her eat right and exercise. Is she going to bring him back? (laughs) Make it a cookbook. I know. Let's make cookbook version 1,000. Oh, my God. It's like, come on. At some point, don't you reach a point where... You know, enough's enough. Like I've 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 ridden this ride enough times. It's time to put it aside. You've kvetched all over everyone on the ride. It's enough times you're not riding anymore. I don't know. I would just think at, at her point, you know, at this point in, in her in her life, well, I she would want to do something different. It's a, I mean, from what we see, well, it's the same thing over and it over. Is. And you know what the horrifying oh. thing about it is? It makes me question the aha moment. Oh. <gasps> If we had sound effects, that's what you would yeah. hear. But it makes me question the aha moment. Because, you know, what's that about? If it's just, you know, in the self-help industry. I mean, you know, we were talking about, you know, other people who are in, you know, the industry of talk shows and stuff. And who are kind of doing everything and anything. And it was in one of our earlier podcasts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they would be, if they were running for president, they'd be, you know, jumping out of trees and potted plants going, boo! You know, because that's where they're interested. And there would be somewhat of a boo campaign there. But, you know, in the self-help industry, is it just, you know, a boo-boo campaign? Well, it's, I, I mean, mean, it comes down to the point where, you know, something, I, I think what's very clear is that, um, when you said it makes you question the aha moment, it, it is it because the questioning I think is you, you know you, something is moved in you and you say wow right and that's where it ends. You don't say all right, what do I do with this? Let mm-hmm. me let me move to a different place with it. It's almost like you say the same thing and all of a sudden you're oh, wow and you know and you and, and it comes down to the whole idea also what we said earlier of the expert. Mm. You know, everybody's an expert, and all the experts, I'm going to say it, are are historians. Mm -hmm. They can tell you what worked and what didn't, but it doesn't mean they can think. It just means they can tell you, we've researched into everything that's been done in the past, and this is what they've done, and these were the results, but it doesn't mean that they can think. Mm -hmm. And and Oprah has now become just a self-help expert. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, dare I say it, that she's not, I mean, she's still in that same space of needing self-help. And again, we're not we're not picking on Oprah, but this gives us a chance to look at, you know, how does that even apply to us? And as we were talking about that, and, you know, I had texted you, and I was just kind of laughing about that. Seriously? You, you want to take Weight Watchers for a run? You know, be the president. You know, do it. Pull a Trump. I mean, hello, the best, the greatest, the biggest, the hugest. Yet, you know, even that is irrelevant. You know, when it comes from the standpoint of you looking at something based in, you know, how does it affect you? And when we were talking about that, it's, you know, you can get stuck in stuff and not realize that you're the hamster on the wheel. And, you know, the, the self-help industry is notorious for that. Well, where, I'm going to also add that I think our generation mm, is notorious for mm, that. I mean, we... We, we talk about this like all the old shows are now coming back. Mm -hmm. It was Roseanne, it's Will and Grace, it's um, you know I'm sure there are others out there, but it's like the old the old TV shows we used to watch as kids, right, are now coming back. So it's not even just we're stuck because we keep doing the same thing, but even what's going on in in our lives mm -hmm. is not moving, right. Right, and so when when you're stuck with that, I mean, wh what do you do? You keep on doing the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, but, you know, that doesn't change. Well, that's doesn't it get boring? That's what I think mm. society is supporting, mm. is you do the same thing, and, you know, you don't change, and you go back, you know, people reminisce, they talk about the way things used to be, and, um, you know, if I say Facebook is now, you know, what did you call it? Death of Death yeah, Book. Yeah, Death Book. It really is. And it is. just talks about everyone, what they don't have, and who remembers this, and who remembers that, and there's nothing wrong with, with you know, reminiscing and talking about things as they were, but when you don't move from that, right? that's where the problem lies. Right, and so that's the, the only relevancy, and, you know, we've talked about this too, is, is when we kind of reflect it on ourselves and say, are we not moving from something? Or we keep, I mean, you and I can speak for you and I. I can't mm -hmm. speak for our listeners, and I'm right. sure people will at some point kind of send us more emails and tell us more stuff as we've been getting. But it's a situation of, um, you know, are, are you just doing the same thing over and over? It's, you know, and, and there is an old saying that you mm -hmm. can't go back home again. Right. Right. You know, we've heard that, but do we really believe that? Mm -hmm. And again, Oprah, it's almost like Weight Watches, and then she's going to, I mean, she'll start doing reading again, finding her book club, and then she, it's like, wait a second, didn't we already do this? Mm -hmm. Deja vu. <laughs> yeah, deja vu. And so again, like you said, what is it that we're doing? I mean, that's mm -hmm. what we, you know, why we look at Oprah, why we look at Trump. It's not because we're sitting here and, and we're really not... Um, judging them. No, no. <clears throat> I mean, I guess to some extent we must be. I mean, but it's not really about judging them the way like the paparazzi does. It's more about the energy and what are they doing and what are they, ref they reflecting. And of course, this could be our reflection mm. that we see because nobody else sees things the way that we do. I mean, that's why the book, you know, Trump and, and the science behind him really relates to seeing him differently than anybody else has seen him. Right. And, of course, the way you see things reflect your perspective. So I'm not sitting here trying to bully Oprah into running for president. I'm, I'm actually not. What mm. she does or doesn't do really has no impact on me. Right. And without sounding nasty about it, I don't really care what she does. Mm. But when we look at her, because, of course, we look at Trump... And you look and say, you know, what are they doing? Right. And I see her, and now they're talking about Weight Watchers, and she's gone, to me, it's like gone back. Mm. And I'm like, what is she doing? And, and the, the talks that she's giving and stuff, I, I don't know. Well, when you, when you reflect on that, I mean, you're not really living in the present when it goes back to the past, and you're in the moment of the past, and you're continuing in the moment of the past. You're just, I mean, you know, it's easy to say, you're just in the past, and a lot of times you can kind of propel from, you know, a fun memory or something that joins people together and gets you to kind of propel from something. 
But when you're stuck in doing the same actions, I mean, isn't it Leonardo da Vinci or somebody who knows, you know, one of those quotes that gets passed around, you know, a gazillion times that said that, you know, if you're doing the same thing, you're going to get the same results. <laughs> I, I mean, think it's, it's simple. That's the defini- I think they, that's the definition of insane. If you do the same thing, you expect a different result. And you do right. the same thing over and over. That's the definition right. of insane. And we're not defining anyone as insane no, or doing anything no. like that. We're just having a conversation about the energy. And you can't not say that that energy isn't out there. And you can't say that Oprah is doing... I mean... Uh, you know, I can't, I don't, we always say this, and I know even my kids, they always say, why do you keep saying you don't know them? I'm like, well, because I think it's important that I'm not speaking from like a an intimate, you know, part of her life, but God, she's got to be bored. She's mm-hmm. got to be sitting there saying, what the heck am I doing? Mm-hmm. And it's, and, and even if, even if running for president, we talk about it for her, that it's so, it's, it's like set up perfectly for her. But even with that, you got to do something different, right? And it's it's really that pivotal point. We're at a pivotal point. Mm. Is she going to do it or not? And I have to believe. And I said this to you off, you know, off camera or off, you know, recording. That if President Trump is listening to us, <laughs> he's got to be laughing his mm. behind off. Mm. He's got to be killing himself laughing. Mm. You know, so. You know, and, and we do, we always take it and, and we bring our perspective. And that's really what this is, is bringing our perspective, not to beat on anybody, on Oprah or a bully or anything. <clears throat> it's just a different perspective and looking at what's happening. And, and we are not followers of Oprah. Like, I, no, I the stuff no. that I see, <clears throat> literally, I'll turn on the TV and I'll catch five minutes in the news and they'll talk about Oprah Mm. or I'll be flipping through there's nothing on TV and I'll flip through and there'll be something that pops up I think that's where the whole Weight Watchers thing came in and I was like really? I don't know what Oprah's doing and we joked we talked about the boat you know she's on the boat right going around we stop we we stop the podcast you know we finish it you go look it up and you say oh my god she and and Gail are on a cruise ship right and I'm like seriously yeah so we're not I don't even know what she's doing except that what I tend what falls in my lap is what I see. Right. And when you share it with me and then I see something else, I turn on the TV for a couple of minutes, I'm watching a Seinfeld episode, and that comes on, and I think, you really need to do a push here. I mean, hello, it's right in front of your face. And, and the other thing is, it's a good opportunity to say, you know, what's right in front of your face that you don't see for, you know, mm-hmm. us people that aren't running for president and aren't interested in right. running for president. What's right in front of your face every day that you never see because you're caught in the same hamster grind of doing the same thing? Isn't that funny? Because that's really the stop. That's the stop gap. Everybody talks about whoever it is. If you Mm -hmm. like Trump, don't like Trump. If you like Oprah, if you like any of these other candidates, people sit there and point fingers and it stops there. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do, what we've been working, trying to do through all these podcasts <clears throat> is take what Oprah is or is not doing or what other things that we talked about. We talked about Donald Trump Jr. Right. And um, and, we, and in the beginning, we talked about Donald Trump and the energy, and we used the science principles, and we used it for him because well, he was a great example. Right. But really, we're, we're really trying to make, trying to impress upon people to make the next step. So what does that mean for me? Right. What is it, like exactly what you said, Mm -hmm. what is it that I don't see? Mm -hmm. What is it that I'm doing that I keep going back to the same old, same old Mm -hmm. that I haven't moved from? And I think that's really what's the most important part. And that's a really important question to ask yourself. And especially if you're, you know, feeling whatever the situation is or, or, you know, if you tend to have some kind of awareness that the same thing keeps on going on and on, like you're living a life of deja vu. So I don't know, Julie. This may be our last podcast. I mean, <laughs> in for the, the Oprah, Oprah series. In the Oprah yeah. series. We got the Kabbalion. We got the Let's Talk About Energy. And we have ancient texts. Yep. And we're doing a lot yep. of really good ones with ancient ancient texts. Joseph Murphy, which, of course, everything kind of bleeds through all of this. Right. You know, we talk and it about, all relates. Yeah. yeah. Interconnects. And so... Um, 
and that's what makes it fun and and yet you know this is thought provoking and that's what we're doing we're really kind of just pushing the envelope in the energy to say what are we all doing and what's going on out there and and again the book that we wrote about Trump you know you know who does he stand with right mm. and um the idea was nobody could actually define what he was doing so we went into a really different discussion and saying let's pick up some science principles and see what he's doing the science principles came from of course our book energetic invocations book of uh vibrational change volumes one through 17 um where we go into a little bit more depth of the energy of the science principles um but then trump came and he was a perfect example and no one knew what he was doing but we did Mm -hmm. and we're like oh my gosh we could see it and then we said how do we present it and we went into the science. Right. And, and, and the reason why, because you and I also sat down and said, I want to take each of these principles and use it for myself. Right. And who, you know, who has taken science principles before and used them to enhance and empower your relationships? Yeah. And that's a really cool space to be in, mm. especially with awareness. Nobody else has done it. Nope. We do it. We people, do it. And people think we're crazy. And you know something? <laughs> I'm going to say it they loud love to and be clear. <laughs> they love to have the conversations with us. And let me tell you, we aren't experts. And nope. should anyone ever call me an expert, haven't helped them. <laughs> because the experts aren't thinkers. Right there with you. They sister. are not thinkers. We are thinkers. We, we think are. differently than everybody else. Mm-hmm. And I pride myself. I am completely immature. And you have to think but, differently in order to be in the space of where the energy is that's that's true, that's volatile, that's raw, and that's just present. Right. And to that's, empower you. And yep. that actually is the basis of hypnosis, magic, witchcraft, yeah. Psychic, Reiki, intuition, healing, yep. all of it. All, all of it. is in that encompassed in that same space. And um, I guess you could say you could find it with us. Yeah, we, we that's what we that's what we try mm-hmm. to do and hopefully that's what you know everybody's been getting from these podcasts. And um, we we go further into it again in our um, the Kabbalion. We have a podcast for the Kabbalion. We have the other one is ancient texts where we talk about Lao Tzu. We talk about uh, Joseph Murphy and the subconscious as a mind. Man as yep. a, and um, and then of course the one we started with is you know we love energy. Let's, you know, talk, about let's energy, talk about energy. Ours and yours. Lots of fun podcasts in that. So um, and uh-huh. Oprah here. Oprah, and Oprah, Oprah. Can you hear me? And you know what? <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen with this podcast? I don't know. If Who Oprah knows? doesn't, you know, I, you know, I still think if she doesn't do it, she's got to be like, what the hell am I doing? Mm. And sometimes, don't you ask yourself that? Yes. Some days, what the hell am I doing? Yep. And that makes a pivotal change. Thank you for listening to this production from EI Alliance. Check out our Amazon Authors pages for books and podcasts, along with our Donald Trump and Oprah books for this series. Find great music by New Threads on iTunes, Spotify, and on newthreads.us.